Hello, everyone. This is Flute 5311. And I'm Cell Slayer. And welcome to Committed Gaming. Today, we are going to be talking about a whole bunch of things. The, the, the new patch 1.1.1.1.1.1, 1. 1. whatever it is, patch that came out. And then the, the, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Bungie Weekly update. We're going to talk a little Iron Banner and the, the new app. Just a whole bunch of stuff that kind of have come, This is a very busy week for Bungie, and so we're just going to kind of play a little catch up. Yeah, just an informational video for all of you guys so that we can go over things that they've changed, things we like, things we hate, you know, and things to look out for. Okay, so we'll start out with the, the patch notes for 1.1.1. The big thing that happened with the, uh, the patch notes is the weapon balancing. And some of these things are crazy, like the, uh, the shotgun gets a plus 100% weapon damage buff in PvE, which all the shotguns are going to start coming out of the woodwork for the vaults and the raids and such. It's going to be entertaining. Which is fantastic because I, for one, am a huge shotgun fan. Um, I really just, I just love them. I think they're fantastic and, you know, they were they were really hard to use effectively because you, you, couldn't, you couldn't do the effective damage. You know, you get in close where you're, all right, switch the shotgun, hit, and then he's still there, you know. So now I've been running around with Phil Winter's uh, lie, which is a whole other discussion. That's a god gun now. Um, but, you know, being able to one-hit Centurions, two-hit Praetorians, it's just fantastic. It's really made shotguns a lot more effective. Yeah, and I found it really convenient that... Uh... Zur decided to finally sell for the first time Universal Remote directly after shotguns got a big buff. I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Um, the Pulse Rifles got a 9.7% buff, which I think, as everybody knows, you know, Pulse Rifles were kind of lacklustering and they needed a lot of help. Yeah, I love the bad juju, but when it came to PvP, I just, I could not run it. I just can't kept getting shot out by auto rifles every turn. Well, and even in PvE, it was hard to use. I mean, it had a great balance, even when the buff came out for bad juju, made it a lot more viable, but it was just hard to get consistent damage. Now, I mean, with certain builds, you know, a lot of people are running, uh, me included, I really, you know, I'm running the Obsidian Mind Warlock build so that you can, with, with, the, uh, with the Nova Bomb. You could just have Nova Bombs for days between Bad Juju and Obsidian Mine, just constantly refilling, refilling your super. And um, it's very effective. You can just, just, just sling those things all over the map. And it really helps you, you know, have good map control, especially when you're doing in PvE, um, locking out a lot of ads and things. And then the, the next one are the auto rifles. The auto rifles got a little bit of a buff, or a nerf, I mean, 2.5%. Although, um, the guys over at Planet Destiny, they've been doing some testing, and uh, so it's supposed to be an average of 2.5%, right? Well, if they did a test on the, uh, the Vanquisher 8, and they found that it was like a 13.2% nerf. Um, it, and they went on to kind of say that even though it sounds like a big nerf, uh, they said in PvP that it only counts for like, you know, one extra bullet. So I guess on a, on a whole, it probably wasn't that bad, but still, um, they've kind of nerfed them a little bit and it's it's interesting to see because apparently you know in pvp now you've got all these pulse rifles firing off everywhere red death has become very strong and uh, so it's i'm kind of waiting to see how it pans out you know after everybody gets through oh man i have to go test this gun i have to go test these guns now let's see what it looks like after you know two or three weeks once everybody's kind of figured it out all right which guns actually are good after the buff and nerf and kind of see how it balances out yeah and the thing is uh I know how you say that the uh, the one bullet, it's just one bullet, it really doesn't matter too much, but that one bullet with the Suros has saved my life constantly. Like, I am on the brink of death, and I get, the, and that last bullet kills him, and if I had to fire off one more round, I would have lost that fight. So, it actually will actually change the tide. Well, for sure, any time you're in, you know, those really tight gunfights, yeah, one bullet does, in fact, make a lot of difference. Um... They, with the hand cannons, they nerfed the hand cannons a little bit, uh, their range. Um, all special weapons, with the exception of sniper rifles, now spawn in with less ammo. Um, and I think you get less ammo from boxes. Um, they're just trying to, to kind of wean people off of that uh, special ammo and running around with those. Yeah, with that one, I actually think that now that Universal Remote was sold, I feel like that's going to be... Uh 
that's going to be something that is going to be run a lot more because it's run as a primary slot. Yeah, I think, you know, on certain maps, you'll be able to do that um, on, on some of the tighter maps for sure. Um, it's like fusion rifles, um, they, they now have a wider cone, so all the fusion heads out there are all probably a little upset. I, I, I like fusion rifles out uh, in PvE. Um, I didn't use them as much in PvP. Another thing that came a lot with the patch was they unlocked all the Crucible matches. Finally, for somebody who doesn't play PvP, you know, if I wanted to go, say, play Skirmish, I couldn't. I had to go find a buddy who has already unlocked Skirmish, and then they had to invite me into their game. And I thought that was stupid that they didn't have all the modes unlocked right off the bat. Yeah, I never really had a, much problem with that because I was always a avid PvP player, so I was able to actually unlock all the things. But pe people like you who are more of a uh, PvE style player, then I feel like that helps them a lot. I mean, I, you know, it was this, it's one of those things where I paid for the content, I wanted to be able to play it, but you have to go through all these weird steps. I understand, like, you know, earning rep on things, leveling things up, but this is just just to play with other people. Like, it's not like I needed to, I don't know, I just didn't really, didn't really like how they, how they did that. But, you know, my grimoire score jumped up like 80 points <laughs> <laughs> after they went through and they did, they debugged all the grimoire stuff that was going on. Uh, so that was kind of cool, and now I have access to all the, all those different things. Um, they did fix the heavy ammo bug, so now, which was, which is kind of interesting. You know, we were in our raid team um, this week, and we're like, oh no, I'm gonna lose heavy. Like, oh wait a minute, and it's just, it changed, so it changed everything. Like we didn't have to worry about, you know, oh man, I just popped a heavy synth. Now I just wasted a thousand bucks. You know, it's, it's, it's it allowed us to, to kind of have right. a lot less stress uh, when it came to the raid. Just trying to worry about you know heavy ammo management yeah and then if you have that that freak thing where the glass comes down at crota and then somebody gets hitched a little too much and dies right off the bat it's not like everyone's thinking oh great now we just have wasted all of our heavy that we have on us and we have to go run out try to find some if we don't find some then we wind up losing heavy out of the deal you don't do you don't have that problem anymore and it's it's just really convenient so yeah so we th thank you Bungie for fixing that um, they added the rep bar, so now you can go through and access your character and go over to the, the part where all your materials and consumables are. If you go next to your Crucible and Vanguard marks, you'll be able to drop them and you can check out all, your, all the rep to see all your reputation points to see how close you are to things. And that's something that has been, I don't know, probably should have been done since day one, but you know, I need to, a lot of these things you don't think like, oh, I just didn't think about it. It's so now you can quickly on the fly see how close you are to to, you know, knocking out your dead orbit rank, like, all right, can I go back to the tower now, or do I need to grab one or two more missions, or, or you know, what do I need to do? Yeah, and I'm really happy that when they did that, they actually included the number itself, right. too, not just, here, here's, the, here's the square, and then you're, like, this much lit up, and that's all you can see. They actually made it so you go over it, and you can see the exact number of how much rep you actually have. Correct, that, and I agree, because that is something that they've, on the past, it's like, well, how much... What does that actually mean? How close is that? And it's, yeah, having the, uh, an actual number there is extremely helpful. I kind of want to jump over to the uh, the app that they did. Uh, they fit, they put in a feature where now you don't have to hop on your character, find the weapon, run to the tower, drop it off, switch characters, fly back to the tower, pick it up, and then go to the team that's been waiting on you the entire time, but you need your gun. Now, if you actually go to the application, you can now take things from characters, put them in the vault, and then put them on the specific character that you want it on within seconds. Yeah, seconds. It's insanely fast, and I actually tried it out when we were in the raid uh, that we were talking about earlier. Uh, I had an icebreaker on this class, and I thought it was my fully leveled up one. When I looked back at it, it was the one that I hadn't touched at all. So I actually went into the application and pulled out my other icebreaker, and lo and behold, popped up on my screen that I received an icebreaker instantaneously. As, I mean, as soon as I hit that button, I got it in the game. So it's very fast. There is n almost no lag time with that. So yeah, it's great, except for, it, 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 maybe it's just me, but I've had, I, I just, on at least five separate occasions, I've gotten the weasel error, where it's punted me all the way back out to the Destiny home screen. 
um, from using the app, at least seemingly from using the app. You know, I would switch a gun and all of a sudden I would get punted out and I'd have to start all the way back over. So I don't know if that's just me or if that's another error that they've that they've kind of introduced with the with the app. I don't know. Bungie is I hate to say it, but Bungie is kind of famous for fixing something and making something else a problem. Which they did with the Vex. Right. Uh, and I really, really hope that they didn't bug it because I can just see people uh, sending a sending a weapon to one of the characters. It never arrives, and then they're looking through their stuff and it's it disappears. Gone. I'm just I'm waiting for the day. I'm yeah. waiting for the day that somebody loses their icebreaker or their Galahorn or something, oh, and the bunch gets flooded with hate mail. Right. Um, along with weapons, you can also transfer materials uh, and consumables, and they allow you to. There's a little slider bar will pop up, and you can select how many. So if you only need, like, oh man, I just need two more ascendant energy, and I can knock this gun out. You can pop over. Who's got? Oh, my Titan's got a bunch. Um, you can click. You can select how many you want. I'll just take two, and drop it on back over, and you're ready to go. So you don't have to take the full amount. You can just separate however much you need and want. Right, and that comes in handy when you're going to Xur or something like that, and you just want to buy one item. You can actually select how many you want out of it, and so you don't have to run to the vault, run to Xur, buy the item, and then run back to the vault and drop off the coins that you that you took with you. You can just take the exact amount, and then you'd be on your way. Exactly. So let's talk about um, we have we just finished up Iron Banner number five. And that was the first Iron Banner for me personally that actually went all the way through. Like, I, uh, like we talked about, I'm not a big PvP guy. Um, I just don't like how Destiny did it. A lot of people love it, and that's fantastic. I, I just think it's way too... I don't know, it's, it's not my biggest thing. But I actually went through, got rank 5 Iron Banner. Uh, never done that before, and I, had a, I actually had a pretty darn good time. What do you think? I actually love Iron Banner because, you know what, level matters. And that means a lot. Which is one of the things I really like. You know, I don't, uh, I, you know, I bust my butt in PVE to get all of this great gear. And then, you know, I go into a Crucible match and I'm getting my butt handed to me by somebody with, with you know, no armor at all. I'm like, I don't understand. I worked my butt off to get all this stuff and it, and it doesn't matter just because he outflanked me one time. And that, that was frustrating to me. So I like, I like the fact that, you know, my overpowered gear gets me somewhere. Right, and I, I really love that the uh, the weapons actually matter in this. It's like if I have, if somebody has an icebreaker, and it's not leveled up at all, but I have my fully leveled out, fully leveled out icebreaker, I can beat them to the sniper rifle shot because it takes them two and it only takes me one. Yep, yep, yep. Well, so this Iron Banner, they were selling the gauntlets, the boots, the shotgun, and the scout rifle and man let me tell you what the shotgun and the scout rifle were well worth it. I don't know, at least for me anyway the fell winters lie the shotgun that thing it fires super slow but it has the most impact in the game and when you hit with it it kills I mean, i am one shotting centurions with that thing and it is an absolute blast you have to hit your target but because <laughs> if you don't you're not going to get a second shot off very easily um, but man if you hit it it hits like a tank and then the scout rifle, which is basically a 331 fi uh, fate bringer, uh, man, that thing is also a lot of fun. I've been out f running around with that and just blowing stuff up everywhere with the firefly perk. Yeah, I have. Uh, I've actually tried Fell Winter's Lie. I love it as well. I've been running around with that, just blowing things away. But I had. I have actually yet to try the scout rifle. I did get it from the Iron Banner, but I have actually yet to try it. It's it's pretty slick. I think you know it fires nice and slow, which I'm okay with. It's not it's not a vision to confluence, which is I, it's probably my favorite scout rifle so far. But um, you have to really be paced with your shots. You can't you can't spam it like you uh, like like a vision to confluence, or maybe even I mean the Badger CCL still fires somewhat slow, but I mean it's not a fast firing scout rifle. You have to be accurate. And and it rewards that. You know, when you hit those precision shots, you're triggering the firefly, which you're getting the big explosion. You're triggering the outlaw perk, which allows you to reload super fast. And it just works so well. And you're able to just to lay into people. Yeah, and I, I, all I've heard is good things about that thing. It's all I've heard is good stuff. And I'm, I'm ready to try it out, ready to level it up and see how it does. So with that, uh, the, one of the things that did kind of irk me, you know, Bungie, they came out, you know, they were, when they were talking about patch 1.1.1, they were saying, yeah, you know, the, 
the the auto rifles were you know we have we have these stats that you know an iron banner you know every you know the certain percentage the most percentage of guns being used were auto rifles and there was cirrhosis and so like okay so we want to try to tone back and make make auto rifles not the default answer so we're gonna we're gonna introduce this patch we're gonna balance out some weapons but what do they do with the bounties they still keep the auto rifle bounty and so that kind of drove me nuts it's like well if you want to get rid of or try to balance out so that auto rifles are not the only option then stop using the auto rifle bounty but however they are saying that with the next iron banner the focused aggression bounty will be able to do be done with any primary pulse rifles hand cannons and auto rifles yeah and i think to tell you the truth uh they kept the auto rifle bounty because they knew that before the patch went through, everyone was still going to use their auto rifles. So they were just going to have everybody run it for the last time using their overpowered auto rifles. And then once the patch went through, then they changed things up. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I you know, we ran a lot of that together. And the things that I noticed, I noticed Thorn, Syros, Abyss Defiant, and Last Word. Those were the four main guns. That and two to them work. I need to get me one of those. I got killed by that a lot. But those are the four main primaries that seemed to kill me. Yeah, I always got killed by two to them more as well. Uh, but one thing that was very overpowered in Iron Banner was the LDR sniper rifle. I got killed by that every two seconds. Now, that was one thing they did kind of uh, nerf a little bit, right? Because I know on some of the LDRs, they got the roll for, they got the the, 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 the penetration, the penetrating rounds. And they've now fixed part of that, right? It, it now doesn't over-penetrate things that were, quote, too thick. So I guess if you're behind a wall, you'll get hit. But if you're behind, you know, a rock, maybe you won't get hit. I don't know. It's interesting that they've they've kind of dialed that back a little bit. And I'm, I'm really happy that they did because I was I was capturing B if I remember correctly, and I was literally behind behind a wall, and then I don't know where I died. And then you get the red highlight guy, and he's well bit well on the other side of the wall, way off in the distance. And I was just so confused by it, and I didn't realize that that was actually a thing. Well, and you know, so here's the thought. Here's my kind of devil's advocate, if you will, for that kind of player in that type of weapon yes it's annoying to get killed by it however it, the the people who can do that there there are very few and they they have you know you have to have a lot of map knowledge and so it re does reward that because you have to know where people are going to hide because you can't see them and you have to know what you can and can't shoot through and how to pick them off and so for those players who have that map knowledge have that kind of, they know the meta of how people are going to move and predict where they're going to move to. It rewards them, and and that's cool because that you know that's so, that's a skill that not everybody can have. But at this, on the flip side, it's very annoying to get shot through a wall when you're taking cover. Um, and that that's that's just annoying for anybody except for the guy who's making it rain sniper right. bullets. And uh, one thing I did want to touch on on this is the the heavy ammo in Crucible. How that once you kill an enemy, they will no longer drop heavy for you. And that actually bothers me. That was in the patch too, yes, right? that was in yeah. the patch as well. And that actually bothers me because I would run my Jolder's Hammer, which is a very, very slow fire rate and it has very high damage per bullet. So I can get, I can kill somebody with two, maybe three rounds from that. So I can conserve my ammo for a very long time as long as I can stay alive. And then if there's an enemy who runs in, he has heavy, and I'm able to pick him off with that, then I have an extra am ammo pack lying on the ground ready to go for if I run out of ammo or if I die, I can go back to that location, pick that up, and continue to hold the flag. And it was nice. And, you know, I know for myself, I was able to do that quite a bit with um, Thunderlord and the Deviant Gravity. Deviant Gravity is another one, high impact, low fire rate. If you fire up just the first few rounds of Thunderlord before you know you proc that, the increased uh, fire rate it's fantastic you can you can have heavy for forever and and lock off a lot of spots especially if you're killing them right either right off the spawn or right off you know right off when they pick up their heavy ammo and you can run over there and grab it you can have heavy for days but the kind of the flip side of it is you know for those for those of us who are i'll say better players who have better strategies anyway 
we we can do that. You know, we can you know we kind of know that every what's it, every three minutes, every nine minutes or whatever it is, every three, three minutes, minutes I guess, heavy ammo drops. We know we know where to go to get it, and we know how to block it out or or to pick up pick it off from the other team. We can lock them out the rest of the rest of the game. For those teams who are you know for the, for the average player who may not have a team who's well coordinated or may not have a team. Um, that kind of has those strategy. We don't have a team around. They just kind of play on their own. That's going to be very frustrating. And I think that's probably why they introduced part of that. They say it in the patch modes. You know, they said that heavy ammo was lasting way too long in the game. Um, and and I could see that. I mean, I know we've been on the receiving end of that oh, yes. during Iron Banner, especially where we we got locked up. We just had a bad a bad run or going against a very good team, and they were able to lock out the heavy and and then pick us off. And it's just like seriously, how many how many rockets can you really have? How many rockets do you have? It's like you know we'd rush a flag and all of a sudden it just rain rockets. And like how do you still have rockets? We're on to the next heavy ammo drop. Um, so it, it goes both ways. And I think honestly, I think the reason why they did it is to to, to kind of keep it balanced for those people who who don't play you know maybe as much as <laughs> as we right. do, admittedly. Since we're talking about PvP. We can kind of go into um, the next. They're going to be introducing Inferno, which I guess is their attempt at a hardcore mode. Um, it's going to have no tracking radar. You're only going to get one heavy drop, and and I guess the, you're, you're going to catch your flags faster because you're, you're not going to have a radar, so you don't know how long you're going to be safe. You're going to it's, points are going to lead more towards. Uh, you're only going to get points from, from kills and objective. What do you think? I'm actually happy about that because then you don't have the people who look at the radar and it's like, okay, this spot's red on my radar. I'm going to run in that direction and try to kill them. And then you, if you're in a, let's say, a high-value area where you're almost near a flag, the entire enemy team already knows you're coming and they're propped up waiting for you. I hate that. So if, you can, if you're able to actually sneak around people and be able to take them by surprise and use that tactic, then all the better for you. I think it'll work out great. Uh, the one heavy drop I feel like would be really nice because then the good, the good gamers who are actually able to stay alive during this will be able to hold on to their heavy and be able to keep it going a lot longer. Uh, but the people who normally just grab a box of heavy, run into the fire and start firing rockets out, you know, they're not gonna have. They're not gonna be able to disturb a uh, a flag as frequently as they normally would. Yeah, I I would agree with that. Now, how did the the radar work in Halo? I never played Halo. I, I take that back. I played a handful, and I just can't remember how. Was it was it like Call of Duty, or was it like this this radar? Actually, the Halo radar was a lot like the Call of Duty radar. It actually had the uh, individual dots that signified each enemy on the map. Okay, well, that's one of the things that, you know, I, I came from, from Call of Duty, and I didn't, didn't pick up Advanced Warfare because I, didn't, I watched it, didn't like it, and so I ended up canceling that because I was also having so much fun with Destiny. But one of the things that I liked, I, I really liked the Call of Duty radar. Um, now, you and I, that's where you and I started playing together. We played hardcore mode mostly, where there is no radar. Um, but when you got it, you could actually see where things were right. or where other people were, and that was very convenient and helpful. Um, and and so the, <clears throat> the radar part, I, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. I, I'd rather not have the radar. I just wish it was a better radar than just somewhere in this general sector there are going to be people. So the, the thing that they, they also talk about the scoring, I wish, I wish the scoring, so th th it kind of reminds me of Titanfall, right? How they do their scoring. It's, it's you know, the objectives are kind of, the kind of matter, mostly it's just who can outslave the other one. And, you know, from somebody who played, again, from Call of Duty, where objective was all that mattered when you played Domination, where, you know, it's, it's all about taking these three points and holding them down at all costs, um, as opposed to Titanfall and Destiny. It's, well, you can capture them. You're basically playing team deathmatch, but you know where they're going to be routes of people. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter as much. And I don't like that because it still doesn't matter if you are playing objective and holding those things. It's, you could argue, well, no, you definitely are. And I, and I don't disagree um, because, it, but it's just still team deathmatch with knowing where people are gonna be as opposed to trying to get and hold and keep an objective. So I don't know, I just, that's something that drives me nuts. And I wish they would 
Right. They would kind of fix that. That's why normally the reason why I didn't like Titanfall. I just didn't like that style of, you know, I was always the objective guy in Call of Duty, run, cap the flag, hold it. And this just isn't like that. And it, it, that you know, I was really hoping, or when I remember when I first jumped into a control match, like, oh man, this is just like domination. And it's it's not, you just have to be the, the big slayer, which I'm not, I, again, I'm not that big in the, in the PVP. I'm not a good slayer. Um, so that was hard for me um, that I wasn't as helpful to my team because I'm not the big slayer. I'm, I'm, I'm objective minded that way. Right. And that's the thing. Uh, I've actually seen matches where an entire team held C on a map and then never went for any of the other uh, flags. We had both flags, but the thing is, we kept running in there and giving them kills because we were trying to get the kills along with it because, yes, with Destiny in the control map and the control gameplay, kills matter a lot. So, even though we had two locations the entire time, we still lost. Yeah, and that doesn't, so that's not control at that point, you know, and I, I don't know, that's just a personal bug of mine that I, I just don't quite understand. I don't know, I just want dead silence, lightweight, and a pistol so I can run faster. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that came around with patch 1.1.1 is they added matchmaking to the weekly heroic. Uh, they didn't add it to the nightfall or to the raids or anything, but they added it to the weekly heroic. See, I don't know how I feel about that. If I can solo it, I want to try to solo it. I always like the option to be able to do that, or the option to be able to run just me and one other person. Like, don't get me wrong, a third person is always nice. But when you have a random, which sometimes doesn't really know what he's doing, sometimes it becomes more of a burden than a help. Well, I, I don't mind having the third person. What I, what I don't like is the same thing that happens with Rock Playlist, or that we saw an Iron Banner is they're AFK. They're just they're just in there to get the drop or to get whatever, and they're not actually helping. Um, and so they're just sitting in the back, dying, or just sitting in the back, sitting down, waiting for you to do all the work. And that's that's very frustrating. And, and you know that's that's with anything. There's always a bad apple, someone that's going to ruin it for everybody else. For those people who don't have, you know, a big raid team or big uh, clan of people to run with, who can jump on and grab people to help. And so, you know, the, I, I see that they're trying to get those people in the community who don't have big groups to run with, you know, who don't always have options of people who are online to, to do these things with. Um, but it's, you know, the, those bad apples do get a bit annoying. Um, that being said, yesterday I went and I did two nightfalls or two weeklies uh, with randoms. And I actually had a pretty good time. Uh, I, did get, I did get a group where two, the two people I were with were AFK or seemingly AFK. So I went ahead and ran forward once we got into the spawn restricted area and I died and pulled them forward. And then once they got there, they're like, oh, hey. And then they started doing, kind of started doing some help. But um, it was pretty funny and I had a pretty good time with it. And just so you guys know, I'm going to be posting a video later on of a full breakdown of everything I ran when I did Iron Banner, my subclass. Uh, my down to my weapons and my strategies I had for each individual match. Yeah, man, that's gonna be pretty awesome. You know, I I ran a Titan this last time, and I'm interested to see what you did. Uh, I know you also you always run your fighting Titan. I do. And so I'm curious to see what what uh, what setup you had going on. Maybe I'll change it up for next time. Um, also, next week is going to be week 26. Destiny will be half a year old next week. Happy half birthday, Destiny. Happy half birthday, Destiny. Destiny. So we'll probably have um, some more, I don't know, probably maybe a reflection of, you know, Destiny, half a year old, and what our thoughts are on it now, and what we're looking forward to to the future. Um, I know they've got the, we still have yet to receive our second DLC, uh, House of Wolves. Um, it was rumored to come out in March, then April, then May, and who knows when it's going to come out. We were just told what, what'd they say? Quarter two is when House of Wolves will be revealed. Yes, as vague as possible. Also still giving us some kind of hope for when it's coming out. Yeah, which is fine. I don't mind. It gives it gives me something to look forward to, to, to kind of prep for. I've already been saving my Cryptarch packages and my public events so I can get stuff leveled up. So I, I've, been, I've been prepping and getting ready. All right, guys, I think that's everything we wanted to cover today. Uh, down in the description box below, we'll have the link to the patch notes and a uh, link to the Destiny update. And we can also come follow us on Twitter. We can find out what we're doing. We also have our Twitch down there where you can come hang out and watch us stream. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm Solar. I'm Flahoot5311.
And to all you gamers out there, stay committed.